Hey everybody, this is Barry Zundel from Trapdoor Creative, and today I wanted to walk you through how to make sure that your Blender objects or your Blender scenes are set up correctly so that you can export into stage at the best quality and uh, the simplest way to do it. So first what we want to do is we want to talk about the model itself. Um, a lot of times when you're creating models, you're doing things like this where um, I'm going to go in, into this mode, I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to hit P to separate by loose parts. And what you'll notice is that now I have a bunch of different pieces here with different materials. Okay, um, And each one of these separate pieces of geometry is another piece. Now that's kind of nice for modeling and for um, you know, dealing with a lot of geometry. But in the end, what you want to do is you want to have a version that has everything all together. So what you do is you select all mesh, all meshes and you hit control J. And what it'll do is it'll, it'll grab all the different pieces and put them together. Now, if you'll notice in Blender, sometimes if you uh, don't have select through selected, you may not get all the different pieces. So you can see over here, like in my uh, outliner here, I've got a bunch of different pieces, but I want actually all of these. And then I hit Control J and it makes them all into one single mesh. Now that's really what I want. Um, and so that's the first step is making it all one mesh. It just makes it way easier to manage um, from a GLB standpoint. It also makes it really easy to manage from a material standpoint. Um, so getting it all together in one mesh is really beneficial. Now you can always go in and separate it again. So I could go in here and I could go into edit mode, hit all, hit P, and then just say loose parts and it will separate those all back out again. You can see there's like a million of these parts because it's like every little piece in there. So um, you can always go back and do that if you want and separate them out. Um, what I typically do, um, and I'm just going to undo that and then hit tab. What I typically do is um, I will I will have the piece that has all the pieces and then I'll select them all and duplicate it and then create one that's only the, sa the single mesh. So um, I'll basically do this. I'll, I just duplicate it, um, hit shift D, duplicate it, and before you do anything, right click so it goes right in the same spot. Then you just hide the original one so that you have the original one. Then click on this and go into tab mode, hit A for all, and then P, lose parts, and there you go. Then I've got them right here. Um, and that way you can work on different parts that are individual if you want. Um, I could click just on this bolt and work on it if I wanted to, etc. So um, very easy to do. And then what you can also do is just go like grab all your parts, right? There's a ton of them. I'm actually going to just add a new collection like that. Okay. And then I'm going to grab all these parts like this and then grab them and drag them into that selection. So I just go like this or that collection. So now inside that collection, I'll just call it like chair parts like that. And you can see there's 569 different objects. So now if I just want to show and hide that one, I can do that and work on parts of it. But I also just have this one, um, I'm going to delete this one, but just this chair right here, it's the whole thing. It's the exact same thing, but it's just a single mesh. And so organizing your scene so that you have um, the parts and then you also have the single mesh, I'll call it like single, there you go. And that way I can export this whole thing at one time. So that, that really uh, helps kind of organize things. So the next thing to talk about is materials. Now, um, you don't, what you want to be able to do is um, separate everything into separate materials. Baking them all into one single material might be efficient from a delivery standpoint, but the problem is, is it really makes it hard to change materials inside of stage because if your chair is baked, if your chair model is baked, where you have the legs and the metal and the chair all in the same texture map, you can't just isolate the top of the chair and uh, change it to red if you wanted to. But if you have materials separated out, you can totally do that. So the way that I've done that is um, you just go into edit mode, right? And if you go into, this is my UV editor here. If I come in here to over here to materials, you'll notice I have these three different materials that I set up. And what you can do is once you set up the material with your textures and all that kind of stuff, you can then grab the grab the geometry that you want to assign to it and you just hit assign, right? So you can say select this. So I could go in here and I could say, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to hit um, L for linked 
it selects that whole thing that's linked and then I'll come in and I'll say uh, I'll click the plastic seat and I'll say assign and now everything that I have selected is assigned to that material and I'll just go through and select everything else um, or you know and walk through everything else so there's lots of different ways you could do this if I just hit like control L it grabs that leg um, shift select this control L that leg shift select this one control L that leg so you can see I'm just walking around doing this like that and then I can select my material that I created and just say assign okay so now those are assigned to that material and I can just do that for all the materials now this one only has wood and metal and plastic so I'm all good here and so the other thing that I wanted to mention about materials is making sure that you have um, the correct maps applied to it so you don't have to have every single map um, you can have um, you know a combination of different maps but the best thing to do is at least have your normal your roughness and your diffuse now for metal I don't have anything that I need for wood so um, there's no metal in wood so I don't need a metallic map I just need to make sure that that's set to zero so that'll transfer over okay so same thing with plastic here's my plastic I actually want to be able to change the base color of that and so uh, I'm leaving that open while I'm just using a roughness map and a normal map and you can kind of see how that lighting I hope in the video it shows up but you can kind of see you see a scratch here and some wear and tear and all that kind of stuff in it so you can see what that does from a roughness standpoint and a normal standpoint okay and then of the black metal is a bunch of different ones so it's got a metallic map an albedo map a roughness map and a normal map to really make that uh, show up the way that we want it to okay um, so all of these are set up now and my materials are set up so you notice I have a single mesh right here and I also have the, the multiple different materials it's not all baked into one material but it's separate ones so now my my model is ready to export and ready to send over to stage so the next thing that you want to do with your object for stage is you want to select the object and then go into your export so go to file export and choose GLTF right there now what it's going to do is it's going to have some options for you here and what you want to do is you want to first click remember export options that means that next time you open up or you want to export a GLTF it'll have the same options so let's go through here the first one is this GL the format now GLTF binary means that it's going to pack all of the data into one file now this is really really beneficial because this way you don't have to move that file around with a folder of textures and a folder of this and multiple different things because in a GLTF that's not binary like this you can see it's going to export a file that's GLTF plus another file called bin and then a folder called textures and you really don't want to have to deal with that um, and so it's uh, it's a lot easier to just export the GLB now you can kind of do the same thing with the GLTF embedded but I would just go with the GLB so you click on remember export and then go under include now this is important you only want to include things that are either visible or selected um, if you have something hidden you don't want it to export um, and so you either want to select it or you just want to go like this and it's visible so I want to select it or I want to export it so I, I usually leave those two selected and I'll come in and change those depending on the workflow that I want to have but I'm just going to leave it like that then what I can do is just go from there and the other thing to do is go under data and mesh and then apply modifiers now what this does is it means that if you have any modifiers over here in your mesh so if I click on the mesh and I come over here to modifiers let's say I have a subdivision surface model modifier now this is going to take a minute because it's a pretty uh, heavy mesh but what it means is that if I have a modifier on that m model then um, that makes it all nice and smooth that when I export it's basically going to apply that and bake it down now I don't really want that so I'm going to remove it but it means that if you have any modifiers on here so if you're doing ropes or you're using curves or whatever like it will export that kind of all baked down so you want to make sure it says apply modifiers okay next thing you want to do is go under materials and just leave everything the way it is but export automatic and except for this PBR extensions always check that export original PBR um, that just means that um, it's going to export the original uh, information instead of like using blenders kind of stuff you can play with that and, and turn it on and off just to see what the difference is but um, I would I would check that um, the next thing you want to do is come over here to the JPEG quality and I typically uh, want to make it really nice so I'll leave it at 90 to 100 let's just go 100 for this one um, and that's it 
Um, you don't need to do compression at this point, um, and you don't need lighting or animation baked into that. So you just leave it there. And so just, a rem just as a reminder, so remember the export, select it visible, go down to mesh and apply modifiers, and then check a PBR extensions and change your JPEG quality to 100%. Okay. So now just name your file and export it. It might take a second, doesn't take too long, and that goes really easy and good. So now let's go into stage. So I'm just going to say stage, there we go. It opens up stage. And from here now, I can open up this file. So I'm just going to say open model, and here's my model. I just navigated to where it is. Hit open. Now, first thing you'll notice is it's way too big. Um, stage brings them in in centimeters. And so if your scale in Blender is way too big, um, it will come in and it will kind of auto scale it. As you can see, it's like 49.6%. If I go down to 10%, that is much more the correct size of what that chair should be, right? Maybe somewhere around there. But if I want to do this in Blender and make sure it's the right size, then what I need to do is I need to go back over to Blender. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and go, okay, how big should this chair be? It should probably be about four feet tall. Uh, maybe like a, a meter, maybe 1.25 meters tall. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this for a reference. I'm going to say add a cube and I'm going to make it um, just a one meter cube, right? And then I'm going to raise it up on the Z 0.5 meters. So now the base of that is sitting there. So now from a reference point, this is a, a one meter cube or a three foot by three foot cube. Now this chair is just way, way, way too big. So what I can do is I can come in here and say scale and bring that down. Oop, I, I don't want the parts. Let me hide that. Um, I can bring this and I can come down. Oops, where was that? Oh, I added that cube in the parts. Let me do this. I'm actually going to delete the cube. There we go. And then I will add it back in like this. 0.5, there we go and now I have it outside, so it's now outside here. So now if I look, I can just grab this chair, the single one, and I can scale that down, once again hide the parts, scale that down to be about eh, about that tall, because if this is one meter, I want it to be a little bit taller than one meter, so I'm going to scale that just a little bit right there. Okay. Now what I can do is hit uh, control A and apply all transforms. There we go. So now if I look at the transforms on this model, it's zeros across the board and scale is one. Okay. So I'm just going to hide that cube as a reference. Click on this, go file export GLTF, and it should have all that stuff uh, set for me already. I'm just going to replace it. And then when I go back to stage, it will reload that model. And as you can see now, like that model is 100% right here. So that's the correct scale now. Now it, that should be right for that chair. So that's the way you get in here. Now, if I look, if I zoom in on here, you'll notice, um, uh, here, I'll just zoom in here. You'll notice that all these materials are set up right. I've got my wood, I've got my steel, um, I've got everything that the way that it should be, like this. Oh, I'm using Blender hotkeys. And also, I'm getting all that detail on the chair coming through. So you can see, like, um, all that detail on the reflections, the roughness, all that kind of stuff going on. So really quickly and easily, if I set up my model right, it comes directly into stage very quickly and easily. Um, and if I go back and I say, okay, I want to um, actually go in and change these, now I can come into the chair, go to materials. I've got my three materials right here, and I can actually create a colorway. We'll just leave it named that. I can come into the chair and I can go, I want to change the color. So I go to that base color and let's say I want it red. There we go. Now I have a red version of it like this. Um, or I could create another colorway. So I could just go back and go, I'm going to add another one and then create this one is bright green or something like that. Wow, that's really bright. So I'm going to go blue so you can see it. Okay, so you can see all those scratches and stuff on the chair, but that way you get really, uh, you can create colorways and color variations really quickly and easily. Um, and that's just by switching that colorway. So now I can just go, there's the embedded, there's the colorway one, there's the colorway two, and that was all because in Blender, I have the materials set up correctly where they are separate materials for the separate parts. So hopefully that gives you a really good idea of, um, 
you know, the, the way that you can work inside of Blender to get your models over very quickly and easily. Um, whenever you want to make wholesale color changes to something, it's always preferable to not use a color map like this. So if I go to that plastic seat, you'll notice I don't have a color map in this because I want to just change the base color. I do have a roughness map and I do have a normal map because I want the texture and the shininess of that material, but I also want to be able to change the color of it. So um, I can I can just leave that blank and then when I go back into stage, um, if you notice this, I can then go back in and change that color at any time. So I can come in that base color and make it purple if I want. There we go. So that's just some hints and suggestions on how to get your data into stage really quickly and easily and efficiently so that you're not struggling to, to go back and forth or you want to make color changes, but you can't. Um, so hopefully that helps. And uh, please send us an email or give us, a, give us a call at any time if you have any questions on how to do that. Um, and we'd be happy to, to help you through that. All right. Thanks a lot.